right, tell me about your um, tomato extravaganza. Yeah, it was quite a thing this year. So because of like the pandemic, I started my seeds way too early. I had been growing this indoor garden and so I did my seed store starts indoors and they really took off. And you did them early just because you were crazy for something to do? Yeah, and I just <laughs> I knew I was going to be out in the garden this year. I wanted to have the best garden ever. Well, so. I think you do. I mean, just looking around. I'm pretty happy with it. A few months ago, it didn't look that good. Like the style that I used, I was like beginning to question it. But yeah, so I had all of these shelves set up and this really good, strong lighting. And these tomatoes and other starch just started taking off. And then it was like around May 1st. And on some years, I can plant tomatoes out because, you just know. Just outside on May 1st. Yeah, just because, you know, it's a really warm spring, but it was not. And, um, you know, the temperatures outside just stayed cold. The nighttime temperatures were cold. And I was checking the soil temperatures. Seriously? Yeah. Okay, you're advanced. Yeah. I don't check soil <laughs> temperatures. So, um, so yeah, I had these tomato, and, and then I started putting up uh, like grow tents in the house because I ran out of space in the shelves and the shelves were too short. So I had to have something tall. And you had the starts and the grow lights all in your apartment too. Yeah. All this it's was not in... all that big an apartment. <laughs> So you were living in close quarters with your little vegetative friends. Yes. Okay. All right. Was taking well, over the house. Yeah. And your husband was cool. You get, you're getting the idea. Now. <laughs> Did he ever say I can't find my wife? Um, <laughs> he was. She's in yeah, here somewhere was, among the tomatoes. He was very tents. patient, but the sections kept like growing. Yeah. Um, so yeah, they were getting too tall for the sections, like hitting the lights, and it's like. It's going to be a viney jungle. I'm like, well, I have to do something. Yeah. So I ended up putting out this little, like, tomato greenhouse lean-to. It wasn't a full-size greenhouse. It was just about, like, this tall, and then it slanted down. And it went from about, like, over there to, like, over here. And so then like about that feet? deep. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Would you build um, it out of glass, or was it, like, plastic sheeting? Over that was a pre-made... Yeah, it was a pre-made kit. Yeah, I'll, I'll put the, the link in the video description so people can find that. But, yeah, it was a, a pre-made, so that was pretty easy to do. And it was meant to be a temporary structure. It's just like a little plastic and metal frame and then this skin that fits over. And it had a really nice door in the front, so that was, that was great. So I ended up putting... Uh, things like the tomatoes, the peppers, zucchini, and tomatillos. There's a tomatillo over there somewhere. It's covered. But um, yeah, I ended up putting those in uh, the greenhouse tent. And the, the zucchini doesn't um, elbow out its neighbors. I guess not that quickly. Uh, they, they were getting kind of big in the house. <laughs> you had zucchini in the house. They were, Can I tell you just a brief zucchini story? Yeah. And this is true. When we lived in California, we went to visit this estate. It was a historic estate. This guy who had moved to the Bay Area and had owned, like, I don't know, half of it by himself. You know, a huge estate. And uh, But he didn't know anything about farming. And he moved in there, and he said, we're going to grow some vegetables. And he put in 36 zucchinis for his family. And That's then he said... I had to get a hog. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, anyway, um, so yeah, so it was big in your house, and then it was outside. Yeah. Uh, so you know, some of the other things like you know the kale and the collards and the broccoli and those I could all plant out in the spring because they like cold weather. But those warm, you know, weather crops, I was stuck. Yeah, they were getting way too big, so I put them in this greenhouse, and, uh, you know, they they did so well 
they it was making a jungle in there and I, I had I had like um, a thermometer that I would put in the greenhouse mm -hmm. and then have one outside so that I could see the temperature difference yeah, and was it? it was a good 15 degrees hotter but more than that it was like a little hotter at the top of the tent, you know, where the, the tomato vines were reaching. They like heat. Yeah. And, and they like the humidity, and I guess it, it keeps the moisture in there, too. It was a hot house. It was very moist in there. Yeah. Unfortunately, the slugs also like the moisture, so we, we got some bites. But um, some of my tomatoes, and I'll show you the type of tomato later, that were in the house had already had fruit when I put them in the greenhouse. I'll show you which ones those were. And wow. then some of the peppers had fruit too. So like these peppers down here. Yeah. Uh, these are the Hungarian wax. They, they were about that big when I brought them out to put them in the greenhouse. So, have they not gotten bigger since or have you just been picking them? They have. Hmm. This is the second batch. You see how there's flowers oh. on them? Yes. Yeah. So, so it, they, oh, it, it's a double bloomer. By, by the time I took them out of there, they were like overripe. That, that's how well they did. So those all ripened. We picked them all. And then this is the second, that's the second batch. Wow. Already. And then I see these teeny tiny ones that almost look like ties. Are those just baby Hungarian wax peppers? I see Let's some see. that are like eensy. Oh, but, oh yeah. that's just a little newborn. Because there's so many kinds. This one is called Casabelle. Oh. So this one is a drying pepper. It's it's better if you pick it and then dry it, and, and then you grind it, maybe. Yeah, mm -hmm. and then this is these are chili peppers. Um, this is a mini bell pepper. What have I got back here? I don't know. Um, this here is, uh, we have um, picnic. This is a little another mini bell pepper, and then paprika peppers. Is this hot? Oh, you said mini bell pepper. Yeah. It's pointed like a hot pepper, but not. Yeah. But it's like. Most of my peppers are shape. actually not all that hot. And then you have um, this fun little lemony looking item down here. Now, is that is that just somebody who sneaked in, or is that that's not that's that's not looking so good. It's actually one of these paprika peppers. Well, look at but, it. It's huge I mean, the and globular. It is huge, and the and the plant has nothing. So <laughs> it's all fruit. Now, see, that's a pretty good yield right there. Yeah, I know. That's the fruit that's, outweighs. That's the plant. kind of crazy. So the single fruit. Uh, yeah, some of these uh, my husband has picked and eaten, you know, and then they're coming back again. I also had the marigolds in the tent too because it was too, um, you know, still too cold out. Do you eat your marigolds? Or you just leave them for bug deterrence? I, I don't. Have you eaten them? I've eaten some flowers. I can't remember if I've eaten marigolds. Mm. Well, that's the question now. Oh, maybe not. If they deter bugs, maybe you don't eat marigolds because maybe they'll just kill you. <laughs> I don't know. Interesting question. You know, there are certainly edible flowers. Is that one of them? I mean, they're in There's, the garden, but they're there to keep bugs away. I've, so. I've heard they are, but there's so many stories, like, on the Internet. You know, I've heard, like, some stories of certain plants, like, these leaves are toxic, and other people say, oh, you can eat those leaves. So I don't know what kind of study you'd have to do to really find out about these Sometimes things. when they say things are toxic, what they mean is that it has um, some sort of medicinal effect. So... Um, you know, if it relieves pain, they might say, well, that's toxic because it also thins your blood or something. I mean, sometimes, in other words, sometimes things have a little bit, you can eat them, but they also have a little effect. Um, yeah, and you but, wouldn't want to eat too many. You know, a lot of things. herbs that you eat are medicinal, and we eat them in our dinner. We just don't eat a half a pound of them. They're sitting all you know, squashed into a yeah, capsule. Yeah, like I've heard so maybe tomato like leaves that. are toxic and you shouldn't eat them. And other oh, now that's say, true. Oh, you can't. So. I would not do that. Like, and some well, people eat you know green, what? Green it, it would probably not kill you. But these have um, tomatoes, potatoes, not not sweet potatoes, but regular potatoes, and um, eggplants have, I think it's called solanum. It is um, an ingredient in the green parts that um, affect your heart rate. So, um, will that kill you? Well, it depends on how much you ate. But um, I think there's a reason 
for example, why you don't, no one bothers really to put much in the way of pesticide on potatoes and tomatoes and eggplants because the bugs that try to eat them, except for tomato budworms, I mean, there's a couple exceptions, but they die. <laughs> Yeah, for some so, reason it we, is actually not good. The fruit is okay. Yeah, but um, the ripe fruit. Yeah, and that's why they say don't eat without peeling a potato that has turned green because it has the same um, ingredient in the green part oh, that okay. gets onto here. I just usually and throw away the green potatoes. I peel them and eat them. Mm. I have occasionally eaten one that was green before I knew that about it. Nothing, no harm came to me. And so, um, dose makes the poison. You know. Um, how much and how susceptible you are. Right. It, you would probably get right through if you ate a salad, and but you might have some palpitations. Do you want to share why you might know? Why I might know what? About toxins and how they affect the body. Oh, I was a nurse and I read. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't it's know if you wanted to share that or not. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I was a nurse until I retired from that. Yeah. Um, um, so yeah, let, uh, let's see, where was I on the story? So yeah, there's a whole bunch of, um, they, I mean, they were getting, and we'll show some film, you know, up, like, while I'm talking about this, so that people can see uh, what these plants look like when I took them out of this tent. So it was about June 1st, right? They've been out here a month. And the temperatures were still too cold at night out here, really for tomatoes. They like it hot. Yeah, and not, not anybody had any tomatoes. So I decided, well, How'd you I'm not going to be able to untangle these after a while. Mm -hmm. So I, um, I ended up putting up tarps on the bamboo trellis here. Plastic, and clear plastic? It, it was the same like uh, greenhouse fabric that this was on. Yeah. It was actually a pop-up greenhouse that was like really big. Yeah. But I didn't use the pop-up part. I just put them on there. And, you know, the tomatoes did okay. They turned yellowish. They kind of wilted, but the fruit stayed on them. So I don't think that was the best method. You, know? you were hoping it would hold heat? Yeah, and protect them like this other greenhouse. It didn't quite do as well as that. And in the meantime, I saw like some of the first people putting their tomatoes out. They had maybe a tent over one. One over there, which I'm gonna show you, her tomatoes. Uh, she put um, this little mini hoop house and she planted these little teeny tomatoes. And mine were like about as tall, almost as tall as they are now, but not not as bushy. She planted these little tomatoes and in this little hoop house. And by the time I took my tent off of this, which was like June 15th or something, um, hers were as tall as mine, but healthier looking. So I didn't gain that much by like getting that early start. What I did gain was that mine are the only ones in the garden that have fruit on them that have ripe fruit. And I've been huh. picking ripe fruit from some of my tomatoes since April. Are you fertilizing yours differently? Um, I only fertilized these once, but I think it was the shock of like transplanting. So yeah, I don't, I don't think that was, you know, the best way to do it. Hmm. So yeah, the, the, I'll show you this other plant that I started with. He was the first one. He started getting fruit in the house in April. And then, you know, ever since May, we've had fruit, whether it was in that little tent or, or out here. So let me show you some of the other, the varieties of the tomatoes here. Can I tell you that I'm distracted by your fabulous Fernie asparagus? Yes, isn't he so nice and fuzzy? Yes, it's huge. And yeah. I see you've got a little bitty bit of dinner right there. Yeah. Another one right here. That's right. We have Just waiting to be in your salad. Bamboo shoots and there's celery down there. And we'll, we'll oh, do... Oh, is this celery? Yeah. Oh, I thought it was some kind of big fat parsley. Yeah, no, I did. I tried something weird. Check so we'll, we'll do... Uh, yeah, we'll do another video on asparagus and on celery. Because those, those turn out pretty well. All right. Okay, so... These are, this is the Amish paste tomato. And, you know, for spaghetti sauce. And then... Adapted for the Pennsylvania climate. 
Are they? Yeah, oh, well, that's where they are. So, so I don't know. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> so, um, yeah, but Italian heirloom is right here, but I don't think there's any. Is it this one? Is it? No. Is it? No, that's no. that's San Marzano. I see a green one down here. Maybe yeah. That's one. Oh, maybe that's it. And then um, maybe your husband has lunched on it. And they're all gone. So those are kind of all paste tomatoes. Actually, Italian heirloom you can use as a spicer or as paste. And then the Arbison are these really, they don't get much bigger than this. Mm -hmm. So. Are they delicious? How did you pick your varieties? They're, they're a nice, um, eat. they're mostly a slicer is what. Um, so the only one that's heirloom actually is the Italian mm -hmm. heirloom. Some people think the um, Amish paste are, but. Um, I think they're F1 and these are F1 and I'm not sure what F1 means yet. I think like, it, it means the first hybridization. Yeah, of, off of, of two the kinds. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so we'll probably have to go. And, and what is this columnar one? That's rather pretty. That is the San Marzano, yeah. Ooh, love that mm -hmm. one. Yeah. It's just, um, it's sculptural. These are a nice shape. paste tomato, so they don't have as much moisture in them. So I'll go around and show the rest because we're not going to be able to get through there. Okay. Let's see if I can read the names here. This one is uh, Blond Kopkin. It's a small, uh, it's not a cherry tomato, it's a little bit Really? Smaller. Oh, and then I didn't I, know there there was a separate designation yeah, for teeny weeny. Yeah, there's so many uh, different sizes. And then Esterina. So I kind of can I eat one? You may. Oh. Let me know if it's any good. It's sweet and tart. Sweet and tart. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, that's, that might be good. It's working for me. Yeah. You got a whole clutch of them down there. Yeah. So most of, most of my varieties I picked because uh, they're the kind that don't burst in the rain. Oh, yeah. Yeah, like Sun Gold. I really love Sun Gold. They're really, really sweet. Cherry but tomato. some of them, right, when it rains, they suddenly, they suck up the water. Yeah, and they, they burst, just, they they just explode. burst. And those um, down there look like so little tiny. They look like currants. They're so small. Yeah. This is, this one's called Orange Currant. Is it really? Yes. <laughs> Well, and these are my favorite. Look at that. Yeah, these. Ooh, um, that's like a little candy. I slice them in half, put them in the dehydrator, and they are dried up. And oh my gosh, they're like little candies. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Nice. These are these are Sprinkle delicious. Them on your dinner. Um, so this is one of the first ones that I had planted in the house. I'll show you. I think this one was the very first one that I had in the house. Is that another of the same? Yeah. It looks like it. And it, it was starting to get huge. So this one, I think, was the one that actually had fruit on it in April inside the house. And it's still blooming, and you've got a little bumble down there. Yeah, he's helping me out. Yeah, he is. So, a little then gentle bumblebee. The zucchini, they had fruit when they were in the small tent already. And so did the tomatillos. So that, the tomatillo. Right here. Yeah. They look like little lanterns, don't they? Yeah. And the fruit is inside that paper bag that they come packed yeah. in. Yeah. Now this one over here, see how it has flowers and some new lanterns starting? Those, those have already produced one crop that were huge already. So oh. we've already harvested that. How, do, how big is a tomatillo when it's ripe? I mean, is this, is this done? Uh, the other ones were bigger. Yeah, mm -hmm. quite a bit bigger. But last year, all mine were that size. Because it'd be interesting to open one up and show the little, the little food packet. Oh, Inside, yeah. Inside, it's little all-natural uh, green wrapper. I don't know. See now how that one is, like, it's hollow? Mm -hmm. This one's not done yet, but we can, we can that show this. It's got a little creature in it. Usually they get bigger, and a lot of times the ripe ones will fall on the ground, then you have to hunt for them there. So there's your tomatillo. And um, it's not quite ripe, though. 
And I have only had those chopped up and made into sort of salsa. I've never just sat around eating tomatillos. Oh, Do I you? I see one. Uh, no, no, yeah, I've only I mean, you made have to prep them, them, right? I don't know how they are if you just bite into them. Yeah. Here we go. So that. Oh, yeah. This would be a ripe one. What's oh, big? Yeah. They're huge this year. Yeah. So. So what will you do with them? Or her. Yeah. <laughs> My husband chops these and eats them raw, like in his rice. But I, oh. I, I cook them, you know, into like my rice and stuff like that. So we'll save him for later. I want to show you. Um, so because some of my stuff didn't, I got a lot of fruit early, so that was a success. Yeah. But my plants don't look all that healthy. So I want to show you some other tomato plants. Well, they don't look dead. As a comparison. <laughs> In my yard, some of them begin to look dead. So, do you um, have a congrats. tomato in your yard? Not this year. Not this year. Okay. Go um, ahead. Where okay. are we headed? So we're gonna pause for a second here. Okay, and we're back. So yeah, I want to show you some of the neighbors' tomatoes to do like a comparison. Now that you've seen what mine looks like, and I want to show the people out there um, maybe what went right here and what but didn't go right. So for instance, I'm just gonna start here with, that one doesn't look that good and that was like the one that was huge and growing in the house. And this one looks a lot more, like the leaves and stuff look a lot more healthier. You mean it's just larger and fluffier as a plant? Yeah. Okay, But it's there's got not all that like dead stuff on it. And some of these, but over there those, well, like it doesn't the ones look very gotten. dead to me, although it does look like it's been chewed by a little lacily. It, it's had a visitor. It's, Is yeah, that right? It's not, it's not dead, but it's not as healthy. I guess the, I, there's a little yellow and yeah, brown. I'll, I, I see mean, it now. I'll show you like a comparison. So these, you know, look pretty good. These have bounced back, but um, so, these... So these two beds are yours? Yeah, they are. And yeah. your other apartment mates have their own? <laughs> Does everybody yeah. have a garden bed? No, just different people have, some have one, some have a few. Mm -hmm. But I want to show you um, one to, comp I'll, I'm going to show you a few to yeah. compare. Okay. okay, so like this one? Yeah. Um, you should see some really like tiny fruits. I do here. Let's see here. It's another current type, or yeah. is it just so little... these? Now those are big for for that. The current. Plant. Yeah. So this. <laughs> what happened for with this tomato. one is I had too many tomato plants, and so I put one of my tomato plants. Um, on our vegetable plant share mm -hmm. table and my neighbor picked one up and so when she planted it it was really tiny and she had this cage with a plastic wrap around it but you could see how large and vigorous that is I don't know what she's done to fertilize it was it clear plastic maybe it let in the light and kept in the heat it was, it was a, yeah, like um, a milky, mm -hmm. you know, color. But you, you can see, like, how big and healthy that plant looks as opposed to, like, my same orange currant. And hers does have fruit, which there, I can see fruit way down in there. Mm -hmm. So this must also be an early fruiting variety. But no one else has, like, I don't think anybody else has had um, ripe fruit yet on theirs. Her soil is so dark brown, someplace it's almost black and it's very moist. Do you think it has to do with how she waters it or what she planted it in? Yeah, we, we ordered a truckload of compost. So you've all got the same dirt? Mm, so I ended up putting my, my, my new compost on my new plot, which doesn't have any tomatoes. And just recently I put some of the compost that we make ourselves um, instead of the truckload. And so I think that's why they're looking a little bit better. But let me show you some other tomatoes.
Okay. There's some good size ones. Yeah, like there the are some. Actually, there are some ripe fruit now on the ones that are over there, which look sort of like a. Um, that's not a San Marzano. It's a. Repreto. It's something that starts with an R. And uh, this one back here is good size. Um, that's bigger than you usually see people growing around Portland because it normally doesn't get hot enough to ripen a, a big tomato. Do you find that they get ripe in your yard here? I've had the big, yeah, the big giant heirlooms before. Yeah, if you do it right. Now this, um, the couple that does this, they have a lot of gardening experience. Mm -hmm. and they put up this little hoop house that was about this high and they put these little teeny tomato plants in there to start them off and they did that about the time that I put up my large tar tarps and I had those huge tomato plants. Mm -hmm. so, then, so it was just a, a small tunnel. Yeah, mm -hmm. so like a couple weeks later by the time I took those tall tarps out, theirs were like up to about here, they were like the same height as mm -hmm. mine over there, but mine were all droopy and yellowish. Mine had fruit, but now look at how much more fruit theirs has. So I'm thinking this is a better way. I had a jump start in early fruit, but I think this is a better way to do it because you get healthier plants and probably more fruit. It's what actually color hard. was the plastic? It was that milky white stuff again. And yeah. that's what you used? Everybody no, mine color. mine was a clear and it had these green stripes through it. It was a really They should nice... all have let the sun through though. Yeah, so that... no. It it wasn't the tarps, but mm -hmm. I didn't have the like the tarps were kind of beating on the tomatoes with the wind. Mm -hmm. So yeah. <laughs> um but yeah, I mean this is a really good They're really good gardeners. I mean, they just really know what they've do they're doing. They've been doing it for years. Well, what do we have here? I believe that's an edible spinach. I um, wondered because it looks a little bit in its red vein like a Swiss chard, but the leaf is different. I think it might be a Malabar spinach. I'll have to Got check Got some on more that. here too. A little yeah. group of them. Obviously they've It's planted. a pretty plant. Yeah, they tend to plant, they plant some unusual species and you can see how they put the um, pollinator flowers on the end of their row. What kind of flower is that? I don't know what, I don't recognize yeah, it's that. Yeah, a Monarda bee balm. Oh, bee balm. Yeah, I guess I didn't know work. what it looked like. Does it smell good? It has a little smell. I guess the bees. No, I'm only smelling the tomatoes over here. Okay, I'll show you some more tomatoes. And this is the grave area. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that, that's actually the guy that was helping catch the wounded crow. Yeah. Um, every two years, he completely redoes his plot. That, that's a different style than the no-dig style. Mm -hmm. Some people do no-dig where they don't till it back up. Yeah, you can see different people have different types of like cages and planted tomatoes at different times. In the south, you could get tomatoes that were so big that when you slice them, the slices would overhang the edges of the bread in a sandwich. Some people like that, that and some, I like these. <laughs> oh, but they would get ripe, so ripe that they weren't just red. It was more like this. You know how, okay, this is red, but it's kind of bluish almost. Some of these stems in here, not the ones that are aggressively purple, but so red that they're not orangey anymore. They're like blue red and so ripe and so juicy that you have to eat it over the sink or it just runs down your throat. You're, you know, and um, you just put it on some bread, a little mayonnaise and a little salt and you just slather yourself. It's a tomato sandwich. Oh, oh a real one, <laughs> real. But you know, down there it's humid and hot and there are nights when it doesn't get below 70 degrees all night long and that, is what makes them. And were they beefsteak tomatoes? Mm -hmm. that, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And so, but they need heat and humidity and they have that there. Okay. So there yeah. you go. It's one advantage of heat and humidity. Okay. Should we look at some more tomatoes? Sure, but tell me, what is that? 
I think of that as an ornamental, but it's growing here as if it were lunch. Oh, is that? Is it's that, a lettuce, but it's bolted. It's really pretty. Yeah, it's bolted. Was it's that bolting. arugula when it was young? No, it's a lettuce. Can I, can I pick one? Uh, you shouldn't, but okay. go ahead. No, I won't. If these are actually. I should not. These belong to other people. So. <laughs> okay. I don't want to be picking them. Okay. This is similar, only red. Such beautiful lettuces. Oh yeah. That would be like attractive. Yeah, that lettuce look. is bolting also. Hmm. Oh, and the dahlias, look at those. Okay, let's go this way. Okay. Well, these will make you happy. Look at those colors. Yeah, beautiful zinnias. Yeah. I love your fig tree. I have a fig tree at home. It's not quite, it's a little shady and not quite hot enough where we planted it to grow huge and full of figs like yours though and get them right. So you have a little black one there. He's a purple tomato. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they come in all kinds. This one looks kind of like atomic grape. Um, no, he's called Dancing with Smurfs. Dancing with Smurfs. Yeah. I need one of those. So this is kind of a tomato mm -hmm. wasteland. These are all stressed tomatoes. All the extra tomatoes. Tomato rehab. Yeah. And is are. this peppermint below our feet here? It is. Mm -hmm. Can you smell it when you walk by? <laughs> A little bit, yeah. yeah. Okay, sneaking around the back side here. I'm kind of looking for ripe figs as I go through. I'm crazy about figs. But it's not time. Maybe yeah. I know there's some ripe figs here somewhere. We have ripe plums here. Well, this no, one actually might be, this might feel that one. Well, it's soft. Does this, do these not turn purple when they're ripe? The, these are green and then they're purple on the, pink on the inside. Yeah, let's see. That one was ripe. It's ripe. Yeah. Uh, mine turned purple, so that's what I'm used to. Oh, they've got marigolds with their tomatoes this year too. So this is, uh, these tomatoes are done by a group of people that garden together. So they do kind of this space and some other spaces out there. And every year they, they plant seeds and then they grow. They do work parties to take care of them and then they harvest. Um, and usually the person that does the tomato seedlings is a person who's a full-time farmer. He has an acre hmm. of farm somewhere else. And actually he has some other yards around here that people let him garden in their yards. Um, so he'll take these and look at how big Those these, are strong. Yeah, the, he, I think he found these from, you know, the farmer supply store. Um, he'll, he'll put his tomatoes out and he'll put that, that you know, milky white plastic and mm -hmm. wrap it. But you can see how nice and healthy, you know, he only takes the healthiest ones to plant, so you can see how many he's got left over. He sells some of his tomato plants at the farmer's market. Um, I don't... So now what's he gonna do with his tomato halfway house clientele? Oh, he gives them away. Oh. Yeah. Usually he gives them away before they look like that. Usually his stressed ones don't look that bad. I was gonna say they've. Yeah. He's um he's been focusing on healthy ones. Yeah. It looks like. Lately. For some reason we have so much of an excess that he couldn't give them away. But yeah, I mean he's he's been doing it the longest. But look how healthy his mm -hmm. are. Um, 
and there's fruit there's no ripe fruit so I think he waited a little longer he he waits till there's definitely no frost until they're gonna really thrive I don't know if it really pays to do these like extra early like I did but well you did get fruit and I it didn't fruit. freeze it's just you run the risk that yeah. it might freeze and kill them yeah. and but they, if it they, doesn't they didn't die yeah <laughs> if it doesn't you get your fruit first I'll show you some more these carrots those are carrots yeah I'll show you some more um, tomato plants that they have So oh, is this there. a pawpaw? That's a pawpaw. Oh. Are they good? Um, I've never eaten a pawpaw. Yeah, they're really good. They're not good. ripe yet, though. They have to get. How big do they get when they're done? They're they're about this big. So I think ours. Yeah, you can see some of the bigger ones up in there. Mm -hmm. But the thing with this tree is, uh, usually there's two people here that. Um, hand pollinate. They actually can't take a, a paintbrush and go from flower to flower. All right. But they decided not to do that this year because we had way more than we could use last year. Mm -hmm. So they want to see what happens. And there's a good harvest. On, I mean, there's there's not a lot, yeah. but I see there's some I see plenty for somebody in their own apartment. But it, I mean, it was covered with flowers, so you can mm -hmm. see there's a lot less. And what they did was they they're not bee pollinated, they're fly pollinated, so they hung this kind of stinky trap to, you know, attract the flies and stuff. So I'll show you the rest of the tomatoes here. So it had dead meat perfume. Exactly. Now that one has a tomato leaf curl, so he's not that happy. This one and looks when okay. somebody gets something like that here at Kailash where you're not allowed to just pummel it with pesticide, what do you do? It, it'll bounce back, yeah. It'll bounce back? Yeah, it'll bounce back. <laughs> this is pretty. Uh-huh. Are those chives? It's, yeah, little, it's actually garlic chives. Little, the, the, the bees, bees are, are happy. a little bit flatter. Mm. Yeah. Huge. Um, Beautiful. Yeah. Gorgeous sunflowers. So that... With the little bumblebees and honeybees, you're making them all happy. I, I like these darker colored ones. So oh, that's, that's my tomato story. What do you think? I like it. I want to come over for lunch. 